You go to the WWF with your brother Jack. You do the tag team thing. You're against Trevor Murdoch, uh, Trevor Murdoch, Dick Murdoch, <laughs> and his his son almost, <laughs> Dick Murdoch and Adrian Adonis. Excuse me. And then one day, uh, as far as I understand, uh, Jack goes, "I've had enough of this. See you later." What? And, and Don Morocco had a big part of that too. Did he really? <laughs> well, we've yeah. got to tell me that, surely. A big part of that. And Don don't tell everything, but I know a lot about Don. <laughs> and so anyway, yeah, yeah, that story is exactly true. Uh, Jack, I mean, Jack was, you know, I mean, it, it sounds ridiculous now, but Jack had just turned 40, what he thought was old, you know, at that time. And we're going back, what? 30, 30 years ago, 40 was, you know, kind of 30 was the deal where, you know, the, the old saying here in the States, you can't trust anybody over 30. Well, now Jack had turned 40, you know, he, he felt that he was losing a step. And Jack was one of these guys that would had so much pride in his work and how he moved and how he looked and all that stuff that he wouldn't settle for anything less than being, being perfect every night. And that those schedules, I'm sure you've heard, they were insane. They were absolutely incredible. 100 days in a row, 80 days in a row. Jack, we just come off of of, of that uh, that that angle where Ricky and Jay were we were healed, and we really had to bust our ass. And all of a sudden, we're we're completely different. We're back to being baby faces working with. Uh, uh, Adrian and, and, and Dickie and having a ball doing what two better guys, but Jack had just had, we'd just, just been on one of those years where we're like, we were like in New York on uh, Madison Square Garden, Austin on this day, LA on this day, Utah on this day, then all the way back to, to Newark on, 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 on the, on the next day. So we're in the, we get finally make the loop. We're back to Newark. We're supposed to be Morocco. Morocco is living there, right? He's living in Jersey. So he's going to pick us up at, uh, at the Newark airport and, and ride us down to, uh, to Philly. We're always, we're always buddies were, we, we worked like that. So Don had got there early, parked his car. And of course the plane was delayed because of the storm. So we finally get off the airplane We're we're walking down and, we pass a bar in Morocco. Hey, let's go have a drink. Let's go have a Bloody Mary or something. <clears throat> and so that Bloody Mary turned into two Bloody Marys, turned into three Bloody Marys, turned into a dozen or so Bloody Marys. So now we're walking out of the damn airport. We're two Florida boys. We don't, we're not going to buy no heavy coke. Why? Because that means you want to live up in that area. So we're still in those lightweight jackets, you know, that, that, that you have down there in Florida. So we step outside in where that parking lot is supposed to be. And all you see is a white field with, a, with some humps covered where cars are at. <laughs> now, Morocco had been there three hours and we could not find his car. So we go back near the airport. And all of a sudden we hear this airplane ahead. And, and it's easy to know the direction because most airplanes are headed south. It's Gerald, you see that airplane headed south? I said, I sure do. He said, I'm going to be, in the, I'm going to be on the next one. Said, Jack, we got to go to Philly. You go to Philly. I'm going to be on that next damn airplane. He turned around, walks in the damn uh, airport, buys him a ticket and be in Morocco standing there looking at each other. Like what's going on. Jack turned around and go gets on a plane. He's headed to back to Florida. He's headed South. All right. Well, I might as well go. I'm here. So. I get in the car, man, Don, and I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to tell them. The boss is once I get to Philly, you know, what happened to my brother? Get down there. Where's your brother? He went home. Why'd he go home? He says, too cold. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, uh, he's too cold. He, he, he had enough. He went, but he quit and he never come back. That was just as simple as that. But Don Morocco was the one. Hey, let's go help <laughs> play So it's your fault, Morocco. Jack walked out on <laughs> I'm so going to blame Don when I see him next as well. I'll tell him that one as well. Did you realize that, in effect, that was basically the retirement of both of you uh, from from wrestling? Or were you always in your mind planning to go somewhere else and somewhere else? Or were you just, at that point, no, nah, I'm done? Oh, what the deal? WrestleMania 1 was coming up. And, uh, and Mike Rotundo, Mike and, and Barry Wendham were, what were the USA Express or whatever they were. They were feuding with the Sheik and... Uh, 
and uh, Volkov. And so George Scott was doing the booking and George, George was a big fan of us. We got George the book with Vince when Vince bought us out of Georgia. We recommended George to be the booker there. So George had just seen that, that, that angle that we had done with Ricky and Jay, and he wanted to duplicate it, copy it with us going and get Barry and Mike. And like I said, Jack had just turned, it was in a 40, 41 years old, whatever he was at the time. He said, I can go through another one of those things because, you know, working with Ricky and Jay, I mean, they were 20 years younger than us and, you know, they could go and Barry and Mike were even younger than that. And they could go and they were bigger and they could go. Jack just did not want to, we were, you know, George said, you know, we will turn you guys and, uh, well, you know, you guys will beat Murdoch and Donick at titles then you'll drop them to Ricky and Jay and then we'll go all over the world with, with Briscoe's and not Ricky and Jay, but with, uh, uh, Mike and, uh, Barry Jack, no, I, I'm not going to put myself through that again. Cause he didn't feel like he could be live up to being Jack Briscoe. So that was really the main thing. He didn't want to get into another where a commitment where he knew, and he, we'd been there long enough to see the schedule and know these guys are working 80 to a hundred days in a row. And, and Jack had done the same thing, invested his money and saved his money. And he walked out and he never went back to a wrestling match. And uh, uh, so how come you didn't start doing, you know, carry on doing singles wrestling matches? Were you just done as well then? I, you know, I, 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 Vance told me I could stay as long as I wanted to, but I came home, of course, you know, and let, but things kind of die down and that angle kind of disappear out, 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 out in space there. And so I, I, you know, I'm wondering what I'm going to do. And, uh, I got a phone call. I'm I, basically, I, 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 I took like six to eight months off and just did the body shop and just did the real estate and stuff like that. Just, just did business and was enjoying my life and remodeled my house. And, uh, like I said, we'd just made that big sale to van. So, uh, you know, I wanted to be around while the remodeling and then my first son, Wes was just born. I'd been just, uh, maybe a year old. So I wanted to kind of spend some time with him. I didn't really want to commit myself to that schedule. And, uh, and I've been a tag team for the last five years. And I, I didn't want to go back to the single deal because like I said, working for Vance, I wasn't no gigantic guy. And I knew I wasn't, I'd, unless he was going to team me up with the guy that was going to be on top, you know, I was going to be destined to be that middle guy there. And I didn't want that. I didn't want that, that position. And so I called Vince. I said, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to come back as a wrestler. So I was another three or four weeks and I got a call from Vince that, Hey, bud, I'm getting ready to open up the South. He said, I'm having trouble getting into a lot of building debt. I need somebody that that's familiar with the South and familiar with the building managers. And I know through Jim Barnett that you were friends with, with all the building managers. And, uh, and I was, you know, I'd always, cause I was on the business side of it too. I'd always want to meet the, uh, the TV people and, the, and, the, and the building people. Those were the two most important, uh, contacts you could have in, in the business with being friendly. Number one with your TV people. So you keep your TV on there and then they being friends with, with the building people. So you could always get your prime date in the building. So. I'd had that business since where I'd made friends with them. I said, sure. I know a lot of building managers. So I was able to open the doors and get into the South where Vince wasn't able to get into on his own. So I became what they called the local promoter at the time. I did that for about five or six years. All my towns were selling out. And the funny thing about it, a lot of the agents would come down here to Florida or Georgia or Carolinas or Alabama. And Bristol, you've been here forever. You know, this is what we want in the main event. You figure it out. So I, I would started doing the, the finishes for the agents coming in and the boys like that because I was still young and I was still considered one of the boys instead of office. And so, uh, the next thing I know, Vince is getting ready to go into a steroid trial and he's wanting to line up a group of guys just in case he's found guilty that he can just kind of throw in and, and they just kind of you know, seamlessly, uh, yeah, run, run like the Jerry Jarrett as well. He was invited. Yeah, up, wasn't he? yeah exactly. Yeah. The Jarrett, he put together a group of people like that, you know, with had experience promotion and everything. And I was one of those guys. And fortunately that never happened, you know, but 
uh, I just didn't want to get back, go back to, uh, to wrestling, you know, uh, before I made my move to Carolina, I, 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 I when I did start to, I, I, I kind of felt, you know, myself, you know, kind of limited on, cause I didn't want to move far away. Cause like I said, I had my ground businesses here in Florida. My son was born and I didn't really want to start packing up and move it, move it around the country. So the, the wrestling part of it, unless I could find something in the office, I wasn't going to, so I, I got that offer to make that expansion into Michigan and Ohio, but that was like, we'd only go every other week. So the rest of the time I was home. So it was just one of those deals where I'd made up my mind, you know, uh, uh, Hey, you know, I had a hell of a run and I ran fast as I could run, you know, but I can't run no more. So, uh, you know, and you made money and you made money and you invested well and so that, you know, financially solvent and you could had options basically. It sounds like. Exactly. And so I, I, that was, I called it, I called it career and, uh, you know, I didn't do anything else physically until the Stooges came on. <laughs>